The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Welcome to Dose of DN, where you'll get a little shot of what my life is like living with SMA. I don't think most people consider how someone in a wheelchair gets from point A to point B, but usually it takes some type of accessible transportation. Today, with the help of my friends and colleagues, I want to show you some different options for van conversions that make the vehicle accessible. There are tons of options out there, but I just want to go over the basics to let you know kind of what's available. One of my first vehicles, and by mine, I mean my parents, was a full-size van. This is actually our second van. It's a Ford Econoline that had a mechanical lift installed. This is what got me back and forth to college for several years. Thanks to my mom for her awesome driving. Because I'm on the shorter side, we didn't have to drop the floor or have a raised roof on this van. And sometimes you do have to do that with a full-size van. Each type of conversion has its own benefits and drawbacks, so you have to kind of find what's right for you. The benefit of a full-size van, obviously, is the space. We could fit all our equipment in there. There was a bench seat in the back for passengers and then the two bucket seats in the front. So there is plenty of space. However, with the mechanical lift, you're at the mercy of it working properly. And eventually, ours didn't work the way we wanted it to, so we decided to go to a minivan. It's a little bit easier to drive around. It's not this big old van. And we decided not to get a mechanical lift installed. Here's some video clips of what we have currently. We purchased this 2010 Chrysler Town & Country used from the dealership. They were the ones that actually had it converted to be an accessible van. It has a rear entry ramp that folds out and tie downs and the bucket seats fold up as well. To eliminate the problems associated with mechanical ramps, we decided to go with the manual version. As you can see, you can lift it up one-handed, and we really love the simplicity of it. One of the biggest decisions that you have to make when you have an accessible vehicle is if you want rear entry or side entry. This is the first rear entry that we've had, and I really have to say I do like it. I can just drive right up and back right out. It does kind of limit your space a little bit. We have those two bucket seats that fold down, but there's no back bench, so it kind of limits um, how many people can ride with you. But we still can get four extra people with me in the van. And it's really a space saver when it comes to parking because you don't have to worry about anybody parking too close next to you because you uh, exit through the back. You do have to be careful if you're exiting into, say, a busier traffic lane, but so far I haven't had problems with that. So I really do like my rear entry van. My friends, however, have side entry that they enjoy. So here, take a look at those. So this is just a Toyota Dodge Caravan. Um, the ramp here just pulls right out manually and you can slide right out, got the straps in there. Um, and then we also have an MV1, which allows me to ride up and shotgun. It's on the other side, but um, but yeah, you can see this one is just a really um, easy setup here and it allows me to sit right there in the middle of the car. Here's another example of a side entry vehicle this one has an automatic fold-out ramp, so with the push of a button, the door opens and the ramp unfolds. This is especially handy if the person with you has full hands, or if you want to do it yourself. You can easily push the button and then drive in and park where you need to, or if you have your van set up to drive yourself, you could do that as well. 
some ramps actually slide underneath the van too that I've seen so there's different options for those as well but this is a handy feature to have here's my friend and colleague Alyssa accessing her side entry van hers is pretty slick she has an attachment to her chair that locks into this easy lock system so once she drives in place it locks in and she can turn facing forward and her chair will be secure. Here's a closer look at her easy lock system. I have to say I'm quite intrigued about this and might have to check into it myself. I'm not sure if you can get this added onto your chair after you get the chair or if you have to have it built in when you get your chair. So I'll be checking on that. Wasn't it fun to see the differences between the vehicles? Thanks to my friends and colleagues for helping me out with this video. I even learned a lot, like about the easy lock system. I want to check into this for sure. So as a recap, a few things to consider when you're looking for an accessible vehicle. The size of vehicle you want, if you want rear entry or side entry, if you want an automatic or a manual ramp, and the tie down system. Those are some important key pieces when you're looking for an accessible vehicle. But that's all I have for you guys today. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.